Well, today on the show, we have a very special guest. I'm excited, TJ Franco. This is so cool. Um, you star in this new Amazon studio series, The Goat, uh, which premieres May 9th on Prime and Freebie. But I think F Boy Island is definitely worth uh, mentioning as well. I mean, you have so many great projects and so many things that your hands are in. Thank you for your time. It's great to meet you and chat with you today. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. I have, um, we have a squirrel situation and the dogs are crazy, but, um, it's okay. It keeps things interesting. <laughs> it keeps things interesting and exciting. Well, a I little drama. Crazy. Yeah. A little drama. Well, I mean, that's kind of like fits well for today's conversation. Um, I've had a chance to watch a couple episodes of this okay. and I have to say that this is a very interesting premise for a show. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not the traditional like reality type television, but there are a lot of other things that are involved in this. Um, I have to ask like from your perspective as a public figure and to somebody who has their hands involved in a lot of different projects, like what interested you in this in particular and wanting to commit your time to it? You have a beautiful background, by the way, my goodness. It's Thank so, so breathtaking. <laughs> I, I'm distracted by like, <laughs> the pool and the tree. He said, it's gorgeous. Well, you know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to recreate that F boy Island backdrop. I love it. It looks okay. good. I have to say that I was really drawn to doing um, the goat because we didn't initially know it was Daniel Tosh, which is obviously, I just, I don't think of a more iconic, I don't think there's a more iconic host than Daniel Tosh. Right. And he yeah. doesn't do a lot of stuff. So like the fact yeah, he that- he not to. Yeah. Daniel Todd, I mean, he's he's washed his hands. He's done. I think he's just renovating his uh, lake house right now. Yeah, like he has a podcast that he does, but he doesn't do public appearances, really. He doesn't, like, he's one of these people who have, like, crafted their career in such a way that, like, he can just do what he wants. He's so like Hillary Daniel Duff. Tosh, what's that? He's like Hillary Duff. <laughs> yes <laughs> he is like hillary duff he just kind of does what he wants when he wants and like okay. gets paid a lot of money to do it he just so, that guy is such a pro on set with his jokes with everything with how he treats people it's like a superstar and then he just yeah. is so unbothered and wildly entertaining and also just a little mean-spirited and i think i think it takes that <laughs> Yeah, well, having done shows similarly to this, when you go onto a set like this, do you have a mindset that you put yourself in, CJ, where you're like, okay, I kind of know this is how it's going to be like this, or does it throw you off, particularly with him being the host, uh, insofar as, like, as you mentioned, there's the jokes and there's a little bit of, you know, <laughs> roasting involved as well with it? You know, I have a background in comedy, and... I love getting roasted. It just, it lights up my little evil spirit and soul. Um, coming into this, I it was the same producers as F-Boy. The GOAT is the same. Okay. So I completely trust them. I really like what we did with F-Boy. And I also feel like, like before F-Boy, I did not feel like anyone understood me. I felt like I was so strange. And, you know, the way I joke around is strange. And I got um, a lot of fans from it. And I realized other people understand me. And especially these producers that were able to, um, you know, and like bring out like more in me. So I was excited to get back because I think it makes me more confident. It makes me like more, feel more like myself. So it was really exciting to jump into. I did get nervous when I saw the cast and everyone is like this huge star off of their show. It's 14 different people. So it was intimidating for sure. But um, my preparation is, especially with something that's comedic, they're going to torture you. You can't prepare. There's nothing in the world you can do to prepare for this show. Yeah, you, there is nothing that you can do to prepare. Like, it's one of those it's things where, episode. like... How could you prepare? Yeah, no, I was going to say, like, I think for you, having that comedic background and knowing pacing and timing, like, you kind of almost can... I don't want to say anticipate what's going to come your way, but like 
you kind of know, okay, this is what I can expect with this sort of thing. Well, it's a lot of fun from what I've seen so far. And I think people are really going to get a chance to enjoy it uh, in that regards. So when you find out you're doing this, what do friends and family think? Do they go, oh, CJ, <laughs> going on another reality type show? Or is there, I would imagine, a lot of support from friends and family and professional colleagues alike? Well, I think, first of all, they say, um, CJ, you said you were never going to do another reality show. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no. <laughs> But you know what? It just um it just sounded well spirited. You know, with with comedy, you get to hang out with people at home on their worst days and yeah. make like you know, you make a little impact in that that kind of uh, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel really good. If if I can suffer and someone else can laugh, that that makes me feel good. Yeah, it's a really cool show. I think the idea and concept of any sort of reality type show is fun. And I think this is great. So you've got this coming out. How has it been from people who have had a chance to see it? Has the response been positive? Yeah, yeah, it's gotten a really good reaction. It's got a really good reaction. And I think, I don't know if I'm even like allowed to say this, but I think they're, um, I think they're moving up the release date. Yes, we, I don't, we will just pretend like we heard through the grapevine um, <laughs> that <laughs> Kelly's going to be like, oh, well, I think it's just, well, I mean, we're talking a couple days anyway, so we'll be just fine with that. So yeah. I have to ask this question. You've been in entertainment and the whole thing for a while. Where did that journey begin for you? Like, what was it that interested you in entertainment? Was it something you saw on TV? Was it somebody that you had met? Because I think it's such a different and unique career to choose, or maybe it chose you. Um, I think growing up, I always wanted to be on TV. I always wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to entertain people, but I never knew how, and I didn't have like a background. I didn't have a family like that. I'm from like a little surf town and my family's all like scientists. So um I think it wasn't until I was like 18 and I had moved to LA that I started getting offered different jobs and gigs and mostly modeling work and I didn't I didn't think that I could even you know I didn't think I could model and I learned to do more and more and more and more and what I what was interesting is learning what I what I didn't want to do and like you know I don't want to I don't want to waste people's time. I want to give people an experience. I make people feel good. I want to like uplift people and I want to comfort people when, when things are tough. And um, yeah, I think comedy just encompasses all of that. Yeah, for sure. I, I think one of the interesting things too, is that like, as you said earlier on in our conversation, like when you're doing comedy, whatever like level of entertainment it is, I think like you can make someone's day better just within a short amount of time you know what i'm saying and i think that's what makes what you do so fascinating i think it's cool you know again it's so markedly different than like anything anybody else could do you know what i'm saying yeah well uh, i love it go ahead <laughs> oh um no we i've just got to reunite with us and the cast members from the goat and it's hilarious because uh we're all just seeing each other for the first time since filming and some people have taken this like very very seriously like yeah. very seriously well i want to ask a couple more questions i know you have a busy day on something like this when you go into it somebody say that has never done it before you can't take yourself too seriously right you have to just be open and ready for everything is that one of the greatest experiences or, or things you could share with somebody who might randomly be watching and want to enter into like a reality program? Not necessarily one like this where they've taken, you know, public figures, celebrities, and they put them in these social experiments, but maybe another type show like a survivor or something like that, where it is competitive and you are up for something, but like you can't think too much of the situation I guess would be the best way to say it 
I think I think in these situations, people are really afraid of getting, you know, they get on a show, it's really exciting. And then they're so afraid of like being made into a bad character. And I guess my right. biggest advice is like, they can only use what you give them. And if you're yeah. your character and you're dialed into like, you know, you know, if you know who you are and you have a strong base, you can trust what they're going to do because they can't really do anything else. Right. Yeah, I mean, outside of like the research that they might do on you prior to you coming on, but it's kind of like that old saying: the police only know what you tell them. <laughs> so to speak. So I've never like, heard that. I could use. You could have told me that sooner in life. Yeah, and it it's a joke, but it's true. It's like true. I was talking to, I think it was a few years ago. I can't even remember Lydia Klimas, her name. She was on some reality show that was on Netflix. I can't remember, but she said one of the things that she learned was like they really do a lot of engineering about you before you even get there. So like that's why they have producers, obviously, to produce you. But when you are being produced and you're being told what to do, do you have a lot of say in certain situations or is it just like here's the social experiment for today? And you just got to roll with it. Go for it, CJ. No, no, not the guys that I've worked with. No, Alon and Bill Dixon, these guys are so funny. It's like they have curated all of these people like so meticulously. And they know me better than I know myself. So they know my like, little triggers and like, you know, if you talk about this, I'm going to, you know, act this way. And they and they have, I don't know how they organize all this, but they get us together and then they just grab a little bowl of popcorn and they're just so happy to see how it unravels. And maybe it might be like someone asks like a question like, oh, like, do you know where they went to high school? And then the, the, the producer will just walk off. And I go, that's a weird, that's, where'd that come from? And you'll find out like, oh, you went to the same school or you have something in common. And they're just like, are trying to bring you to find these things in common in a shorter amount of time. But I never felt, I never felt like I was ever being told what to do. I think they knew I would make decisions based off of, um, I'm unbothered. They say it's very funny because I'm very unbothered and um, I don't like being told what to do. So when you, when those things happen, if a dramatic moment happens, if um, somebody's bossy, my reaction, I, the cameras are always zooming in on me because I'm going to, I, they know I'm going to give something either where I just blow it off or I'm defiant. But it's like basically all of these people, we have a list of triggers and they just put us together. And if it's not working, a, a little bottle of tequila might just appear out of nowhere. <laughs> I love it. You are a very carefree personality. I do gather that from like the, when I was talking to your publicist, she's like, she's great. You know, you're going to have ah. a lot of fun. She'll make you laugh. And I mean, I've worked with Kelly forever. So Kelly's I want to know, yeah, I, I'm just interested to know um, when fans get a chance to watch, like, what can they expect? Uh, like, can you just fill us in on the premise of the show from your perspective? Like for those who don't have the background information that we might have. Okay. So the goat is like an all-star reality challenge where it's a house reality. We all live together in this beautiful mansion in Atlanta and we compete for the title of the greatest of all time. Everyone in their own season has done something badass, cool, defiant, like defining in reality TV. And now we're all together and everyone is on. We are in little tiny bunk beds. I'm sleeping oh, next to Jill Zarin. <laughs> and it's so funny, but we have, we become just like a little family and it's the cutest thing, but we are also trying to kill each other. We are actively trying to kill each other. So even, I mean, I, I have to say, even with my best intentions, you know, I had to do some things that you, you guys will see. Um, and I'm a little nervous. Like, I'm a little nervous because I really try to be like, you know, the same person. If you meet me here and you see me somewhere else, I always try to be like consistent. So in these scenarios, you really get pushed to be maybe the worst version of yourself. And I'm still super stoked with how everything came out, but this is definitely me trying to juggle a lot. And um, 
you got a lot of crisis management to be seen and just I don't know if you want to see me get electrocuted but I... <laughs> well as they say in Hollywood that's entertainment babe you're <laughs> I mean it's just like the way that it is you know what I'm saying so and the viewership for these types of shows are just ridiculous. Like they get more garnered attention than like the news. So I think it's cool. I've seen the first two episodes. I can't say much, two? but yeah. So shout who's out to Pride and Freedom. For... Well, you, of course, I mean, <laughs> you're my favorite. Like, I don't think I can say like, I, I, I've just, I definitely I'm rooting for you for sure because I think when the show starts out, you obviously can tell, like, at the beginning who, like, is going to be, like, I don't want to use the term star, but, like, you just kind of know right away, like, who's going to be the problem oh. child, you know, who's going to be the gonna fixer, sort of. Child. What's that? You know who's going to be the problem child. Yeah, so <laughs> I feel like that they just kind of give that away right away. Um, that's why I asked you earlier about the psychology and the engineering of the scenarios that they put you in, uh, because I just wonder, but I imagine with all the research that they do, obviously seeing how you perform on F boy Island, uh, and then knowing like your personality and persona, psychologists, everybody that puts these shows together. And that's the thing I like to say is like, yeah, it's 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 reality television in the sense of like we're watching real people, but mm -hmm. these shows are very well calculated, but they mm -hmm. also come across very natural too, because you want to get real moments and not just like engineered situations, whether it's like sexual tension or whatever. Like you just want it to be fun. You know what I'm saying? Or as you said, throw in a little tequila, a little bit of uh party snacks and and watch the watch the party unfold so well, you know when we start getting tired like the the weaves start coming down yeah. as soon as we start getting tired which is like people are up all night strategizing like like spreadsheets like I'm not even like I'm talking about actual spreadsheets like excel um trying to figure out how to win this game so we, we're getting exhausted and it's like your brain always being on and there are always cameras. So you never get to feel like, okay, now I'm, now I'm off. You're on all the time. And so once you, you know, once you get a little grumpy, get a little tired, get a little hungry, um, like pretty early on, everyone stops being <laughs> like their most put together self. Because and it's like Tosh just keeps throwing like it's like dodgeball. They just keep hitting us with dodgeballs, and you think it's gonna stop? No, more dodgeballs. It's just horrible. Well, very cool. Well, congratulations, and this drops very soon on Prime and Freebie. The Goat uh, with host Daniel Tosh, and of course our guest CJ, and a cavalcade of other interesting people. Uh, it's just a lot of fun, and I love it. Thanks for hanging out, CG. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for making me laugh. You honestly started my day just like with the best mood. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I do my best. Thank you. <laughs> Whether it's well intended or not. <laughs>